What's up, you freaking geniuses? So in this video, I'm gonna teach you how to write a rule for g of x by transforming f of x, all right? And we're specifically gonna be covering radical functions. Now, you can always break these types of problems into two steps. So the first step is just writing your first transformation as h of x is equal to f of x, okay? So you basically just say h of x is equal to f of x transformed. And then the second step would just be saying g of x is equal to h of x transformed, all right? So I know that might sound super vague right now, but I'm gonna show you exactly how to do it. Now, if you need a quick refresher on all the different types of transformations of radical functions, I'll link a video to that in the card above, because I'm gonna go over them kind of quickly in this video, all right? So here it says, let g, or in other words, g of x, be a vertical stretch by a factor of two, all right? So this is our first transformation, right? Followed by a translation two units up. So that's our second transformation. Of the graph of f of x is equal to the square root of x plus three. So again, the first step over here is just writing h of x, okay? And now we're going to use the first transformation for f of x. So in order to vertically stretch a function, you have to multiply the function by that number, by that factor. So here we would just say two times f of x. Okay, so remember, whenever you vertically stretch or shrink something, you just multiply the function by that number, right? You just put that thing in front, okay? So h of x is going to be equal to two times f of x, and f of x is this guy right here, right? The square root of x plus three. So two times the square root of x plus three. I'll put it in parentheses. So now here we can just distribute the two into the parentheses, right? So then we're gonna say that h of x is equal to two times the square root of x, and then two times three is positive six, okay? So that's as simplified as we can get it, right? So here h of x is equal to two times the square root of x plus six. Now we need to perform our second transformation, right, to find g of x. So now uh, for our second transformation, we're gonna start with g of x. So we're gonna say that g of x is equal to h of x transformed, right? So we're gonna apply this second transformation to h of x. So this one says translate it two units up. Okay, well then here g of x is gonna be equal to, again, h of x, right, h of x, and then translated two units up. If you wanna translate a function up or down, you simply add or subtract that number at the very end. So here it says two units up, so that means plus two at the very end. So we're just gonna put plus two right there, okay? Now we're gonna combine these two, okay? So remember, h of x is this guy up here, right? So h of x is equal to uh, two times the square root of x plus six. So that's what we're gonna write right here for h of x. So we're gonna say that g of x is equal to so h of x times the square root of x plus six. And then now we also have this plus two at the end, right? So plus two, all right? Now combining like terms here, six plus two is equal to eight. So then finally we get g of x is equal to two times the square root of x plus eight, all right? That's as simplified as we can get it. So this would be our final answer right there. All right, here's the next one. So it says let g, g of x, be a reflection in the y axis. So that's our first transformation, followed by a translation one unit to the right. One unit to the right of the graph of f of x is equal to two times the cube root of x minus one, all right? So again, the first thing is gonna be uh, just saying h of x is equal to f of x, okay? Now we have to transform f of x with this first transformation, right? So it says a reflection in the y-axis. So to reflect something in the y-axis, you have to turn all your x's negative. So you just put a negative sign right there with your x in the parentheses. And in case this asked for a reflection in the x-axis, you would have put a negative sign on the outside in front of the whole function. But again, here it says y-axis, so that's negative x. So here we're gonna have that h of x is equal to, and then we're just gonna replace all our x's with negative x's right here. So h of x is equal to two times the cube root of negative x minus one, okay? 
So that's as simplified as we can get it with this transformation. So now we'll move on to the next one. And the next one is g of x, right? So g of x is equal to h of x, right? And we have to apply this uh, second transformation to h of x. So it says a translation one unit to the right. So we want to move it one unit to the right. So basically positive one spaces to the right, okay? So whenever you want to move a function left or right, it goes inside of the parentheses with the x. So here we're going to say that g of x is equal to h, and then in parentheses we're going to say x minus 1, like that, all right? You basically put the opposite number of the spaces that you want to move. So if we want to move one space to the right, so that's basically in the positive direction, right, one space, well, we're going to put the opposite sign in here, so we're going to put a negative one, okay? So now let's simplify h of x. So g of x is equal to h of x minus 1, right? So here we're going to replace all our x's with x minus 1's, okay? So wherever we have an x up here, right, have an x, we're going to replace it with x minus 1. So we're going to say that g of x is equal to 2 times the cube root of, and then we have a negative sign right here, right? So I'll write it right there. And then these x's, right? These x's we're going to replace with x minus 1. So we're going to say x minus 1. And then we have a minus 1 at the end, right? Minus 1. Okay, now we can simplify this a little bit, right? So we're going to say that g of x is equal to 2 times the cube root. And then here we can distribute this negative uh, symbol inside of the parentheses, right? So we're going to have negative x plus 1, and then we still have this minus 1 at the end. Now combining like terms here, negative 1 and, or sorry, positive 1 and negative 1 just go to 0. So we're just left with negative x. So then our final answer right here would just be, I'll write it over here, that g of x is equal to 2 times the cube root of negative x. All right, here's the next one. So this one says, let g be a horizontal shrink by a factor of 2 thirds, first transformation, followed by a translation four units left, translation four units left of the graph of f of x is equal to the square root of 6x, all right? So again, we're gonna say that h of x is equal to f of x, right? Step one. Now we're going to rewrite f of x with this first transformation, right? So we're gonna say that h of x is equal to, and this first transformation says a horizontal shrink by a factor of two thirds. Now, a couple things going on here. Whenever it says horizontal anything, that means you're gonna put a number inside with the x. So we're gonna have f of some number in here times x, okay? And the other thing is, whenever we're talking about horizontal stretching or shrinking, uh, the number that you put in is always the reciprocal of the number it gives you. So here it says uh, horizontal shrink by a factor of two-thirds. We're not going to put two-thirds here. You're going to put the reciprocal, or basically just flip the fraction, right? So we're going to put three halves. Cool. So that's the first transformation. So now let's actually work it out. So h of x is equal to, basically we're going to replace all our x's with just three halves x's, right? So here we're going to have that h of x is equal to, again, it's the square root of 6x, right? So here we're going to have the square root of 6 times 3 halves x. Okay, now if we simplify this right here, 6 times 3 halves, well, uh, 6 times 3 is 18, and 18 divided by 2 is equal to 9, right? So we can simplify this down to h of x is equal to the square root of 9x, okay? Another thing we can actually do here is 9, we can actually take the square root of 9, right? Since that's a perfect square. So uh, the square root of 9x, since we're multiplying them together in here, we can actually break those up into their own radicals. So we can say that h of x is equal to the square root of 9 times the square root of x, right? So the square root of 9 is just equal to 3, right? So here we have h of x is equal to 3 times the square root of x, right? Now that's as simplified as we can get it, right? So now let's move on to our second transformation over here. So it says a translation four units left, okay? And uh, actually, I'm just going to write it up here. So we're going to say that g of x is equal to h of x, right? 
Now, again, uh, here it says a translation four units to the left. So to the left, you would think minus four spaces, right, in the negative direction. So again, we're going to put the opposite number inside of the parentheses, so plus four, right? So we're going to say that g of x is equal to h of x plus four, like that, right? Now, again, let's bring in what we have for h of x. So we're going to say that g of x is equal to, now wherever we have just a single x, we're going to replace with an x plus 4. So 3 times the square root of x, but again, we're going to replace all our x's with an x plus 4. Okay, there's nothing left to reduce or simplify or combine here, so this would be your final answer right here. So if you found the video helpful, definitely leave a thumbs up down below. And if you have any other questions or want to see any other examples, just let me know in the comment section below.